Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of PD and P Dubs, and hope you all had a merry Christmas. P Dubs, I hope you had a great Christmas. Indeed, yeah, Christmas is beautiful and wonderful and glorious, and uh, so yeah, wishing the same for everyone else. And uh, what a special time of year it is! Right, as especially as we get ready for New Year's. Hard to believe it's going into twenty twenty four. Hmm. Boy, time just keeps flying by. I know the other day I was signing off some, well, this is going to kind of spoil when we were recording this, but I was signing some requisite recs for stuff, and I was putting 12-12, and then the next thing I wrote was 24, and I was like, wait a second, we're not in 24 yet. Oh, no, you're jumping the gun a bit. But I was thinking maybe that 12-12, I was adding those two numbers in my head <laughs> and got to 24. Doing a little math there on the signing, huh? Yeah, so I was like, oh, no, it's still 23 just for a few more weeks. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so uh, we thought we would talk about, uh, you know, the Luke account of uh, the Christmas narrative and uh, the birth narrative of Christ and uh, just chit chat about that a little bit today. Which is the more familiar of the birth passages, which right always at Christmas Eve. Right. And uh, yeah, it is very poetic in nature. You know, uh, Luke writes it in such beautiful ways and um, yeah, it's quite a... Quite a great uh, story. Right. Nothing beats the King James Version. Of right. It. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I don't know, maybe, we, but you don't have the King James Oh, here. I could pull it up. Oh, I mean, because I, I got logos up on my computer, Uh huh. and I have, I just got to get that uh, library, King J- Round Yawn and all those things. Yeah, and Low and all of that. So yeah, I have it right here. Me too. Should we read from the King James? Why not? Yeah, what is this. That, yeah, that's crazy. So, how far do you want to go? All the way through. Uh, uh, maybe to verse nine twenty through verse twenty. Sure. I can start. Maybe I'll take the first half until verse 14. You can take over when the angels were saying and praising. Sounds great. Okay. Luke 2, 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it was that, while they were there, the days were accompanied that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in slaughtering cloths, and laid him in a manger because there is no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there is an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they had heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah, that was a nice reading. Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. But yeah, so there's a lot in that. Mm Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I don't know, I'm just looking at some things I have underlined here or highlighted. Mm-hmm. One, I just have like the timing of it when it says, and when they were there, the time came. So it's just showing this is all part of God's timing. Yeah. Yeah. The fulfillment uh, of time. Um, yeah. This is all culminating now. Not just the time came to give birth, but, you know, for him to come. Right. And all the different things set up to get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem with mm-hmm. the taxes and all that and the journey they had to make. Yeah, it's amazing how, uh, you know, God uses um, worldly events to bring his people together right. uh, for his son to come into the world. But um, and you even see that kind of even with his crucifixion with Passover, everybody mm-hmm. coming in. Mm-hmm. So that's a worldly event going on. Right, right. And, you know, Caesar Augustus is in the Roman world considered God, and, you know, he issues this decree that all need to be taxed, and and it's kind of a big deal, and it impacts everyone's life. And uh, so they're on the move to go to their hometowns, and uh, but yet, uh, you know, you pit that against the God of all creation, our God who made heaven and earth, um, his messengers issued a decree, right, to the shepherds um, that uh, a Savior has been born unto them. Right. And uh, and he is Christ the Lord, and here's how you find him, and here's where he's at. And so it, it moves the shepherds into Bethlehem to go see him. So... It's kind of the same movements going on, um, but you know where Caesar Augustus, in worldly terms, seems to be such an enormous figure, and you know desires to be worshipped as a god. Um, it it seems like the most powerful god out in the most ex- obscure places shows his glory to be revealed. But yet it's not seen by everyone. Right. And it comes to the lowly yeah. at first. Mm-hmm. And even that, like, getting that timing of it all set up, like, I was just Googling, like, the distance between Nazareth and Jerusalem mm-hmm. back in those days. Like, it said it would have taken about 30 hours for somebody to walk that. Wow. So, obviously, that's not a one-day walk. Mm-hmm. And with Mary being pregnant, could have they gone as... For each far each day, that probably was limited. Right, right. And just all those different things that worked to make this happen, this prophecy that was prophesied hundreds of years prior to this, mm-hmm. to make sure that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the very thing, you know, that gets them out of uh, Galilee uh, to Bethlehem, uh, which is the city of David. You know, and uh, where the house and the line of David were for the Messiah to come through. So it it does point to the messianic lineage. Right. And uh, so it, it's just checking off all these things, like you'd said, like these prophecies and uh, Old Testament, you know, looking oh, forward and the way that these were all fulfilled. Mm hmm. Which I, to me, that always speaks to the people saying, oh, you know, how can Jesus, Jesus is not the. Messiah, you know, he just knew the prophecies. He knew all the prophecies of those things that he had to do. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't really have a say in this one. (laughs) No, he didn't. No, he was was an infant. Right. You know, so uh, exactly. Um, But yeah, so uh, she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And that 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 word "in" is not like a hotel. Right. Um, it's like um, the guest room of right, it, the house. Was it a sermon you preached somewhat recently, maybe the past year, where you were talking about that? That it was like an upper room, or kind something? of like an upper room, like an upper guest room, right? Where um, you know, like if you know, people have a guest room in their home if they're having people stay over. Um, this room, because of all of the movement toward the, these hometowns and a particularly little sleepy town of Bethlehem, you know, the house, the guest room was full full up. Right. And so 
no room. There wasn't any room for them in that in that guest room. So they were kind of down by where the animals were. And right. uh, depending on who, you know, there's a lot of thought on that. And right, some like could say it's like a cave, a cave or a grotto kind of thing. Or it could be the back of the house on the ground, you know, right. where, where the animals would kind of, you know, graze and just chill mm -hmm. and sleep and eat. Yep. But yeah, it's all these things that's, you know, it's one of those things we put our mind to what we see when we read this. Yeah. And it's maybe not always the most accurate. Like, mm -hmm. I think of like when I've watched a movie or read a book or read the book, then watched the movie. Like, I'm like, that's not how I envisioned it when I read the book. Right. And that's what I think happens here a lot of times because we always had that picture of them just out in the stable and the, mm -hmm. and, you know, the barnyard animals around them. And yeah. You know, you have the, always like when you had like the children's program, always like knocking, like, nope, there's no room in the no hotel. Room, yeah, yeah. Like, keep on going. No room in the, uh, the Bethlehem Hotel Inn or whatever. The Holiday Inn down in Bethlehem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and I've also heard, you know, some thoughts that, you know, the, the manger wasn't necessarily a wooden structure, but more of a stone structure. What? Oh, I, that just ruins my Christmas Does narrative. Yeah. You know, knowing it could have been stone. Oh, yeah. And Lord. I think I think the commentator who brought this forward um, said, "Is you know, Christ's life? Um, he lay in a, a stone, you mm. know, manger, and then at the end of his life, he was in the mm. stone tomb that oh, the okay. stone was rolled over could you even almost connect it then even to abraham sacrificing isaac where that was on a stone altar right mm. yeah could be. Connect. yeah but yeah and that had been more uncomfortable i would think yeah than a wood not that wood's the most comfortable but stone right seems so if it is stone uh no wonder they're wrapping them in swaddling <laughs> cloths <laughs> that baby's gonna be cold cold and not as smooth i would think right yeah, so uh, it's, it's a feeding trough nonetheless, and uh, so it's a place where animals come to be fed, and if you think, you know, the savior of our world, uh, he comes to feed us, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, feed us with his presence, and um, well, now as Christians, uh, we, mm -hmm. we get fed by his word and his sacrament. The right, body and blood. Body and blood. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting... Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that about it being stone. Yeah, I hadn't either. This was... Um, and, and I can't... It was in conversation that someone brought this up to me. Okay. And uh, so I I haven't looked up the commentator, but, you know, I just bring it forward. But as, it gives another, like, connecting point and, like, oh, right. that's interesting. Because I think maybe last time when we talked Christmas on the podcast last year... We might have dived into like the timing of it that it wasn't really December twenty fifth. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's all these kind of man made or that there is three wise men. Well, we don't really know how many wise yeah, men. Just because there were three gifts that were named. Right, and they weren't there <laughs> when he was born that first. Exactly. Time. Right. Yeah. So um and you know, the the whole aspect of the shepherds, you know, keeping watch over their flock at night and then you know, the angel of the Lord, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were, I love that, they were sore afraid. Yeah, that's, what does sore afraid even mean? Yeah, very afraid, uh, maybe it means like they're like trembling. Extremely or severely is when I googled it. Okay. But yeah, so that, and you can't blame them for being that afraid, like, yeah. They're just doing their thing, you know, minding their own, their sheep. And then all of a sudden you see this multitude of angels. Like, I couldn't imagine what that would have felt like or felt right. being, experiencing that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to be out in like, a, you know, more of a rural area at night to like stargaze, maybe like wall camp. Right. Or think of the Minnesota, the mission trip we went up to Minnesota. That was kind of out in the... Yeah, so if you you find yourself in a place like that, and you look up and you see all these, you know, the galaxy and the stars and the constellations, and I mean, add 
had the glory of the Lord coming, you know, you see an angel out there. And shiny, right? It said that it was shining, the glory of the Lord Lord shone shone. round about them. Like, so did the sky just like light up? I think it did. So even that, like that idea of it lighting up around them, Mm -hmm. like what that would have been. So it makes sense that they would have been sore afraid. It was like they were engulfed by this uh, shining of this, the glory of the Lord. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that alone, like that would begin to like freak people out. Um, I know like, you know, meteor showers or like if you ever out in a field, like we're describing and you see like, uh, shooting stars and you know, if you've ever been out where it's like more than one and you're like, wow, look at that, look at that. But sometimes, and I've yet to be one where there's a meteor shower, like the Persides meteor shower. I've tried to find that and with no luck. Uh, and then there's there was one in, um, actually, it's the night we're recording. Mm. Um, uh, it's called the Gemini um, meteor shower. So maybe some of you who are listening tonight may have gone out on uh, December 13th. And it was supposed to be around 9 to noon or 9 to midnight. And there was, uh, you look toward the constellation of Gemini and uh, you were to be able to see at least 20 20 shooting stars per hour, like on average. But at its height, you could see they predict 120 shooting stars per hour. That's crazy. I I mean, so like. Yeah, like, could you imagine seeing that? How you'd be like, "Wow, wow, wow! Look at the look at the sky," and that's so, nothing compared to this. Just this one angel, right? And I'm just looking. I did not know this was going on. It shows how much I pay attention. <laughs> but it says for Chicago area, for so for our Chicago listeners, the best viewing time is between midnight and six a.m. Oh, okay. Here I was thinking I didn't have to stay up that late, so. No, you got to stay up all <laughs> or wake up really early. Wake up real early, yeah. But what way do I got to look to see this? So the Gemini, yeah, I want to say, I think, uh, I could be wrong, but the Gemini constellation, I think, is like south uh, east. No, it must be in the north because I did see, read an article that, like to look north. Okay. So the Gemini constellation must be in the north. I'm thinking of the uh, Orion's Belt. Mm. That's in like the south southwest. Okay, and then it was. This is kind of interesting. I'm just on NBC Chicago, and they're like, "Give your eyes at least 30 minutes to adjust to the darkness." Yes. Before it's so, it's like I got to sit out there for 30 minutes in the cold. Yeah. Well, and the article I read was like, make sure you have good clothing. Yeah. So it says, so dress warm and bring blankets. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, have a reclining kind of, you know, seat, you know, so that you can, you know, lay back and look up. Oh, but this is good news from the Adler Planetarium. Viewers have a good chance of seeing it since skies will be darker due to the new moon on December 12th. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if it's from the Adler Planetarium, it must be... Must be good. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading it's like a 1% of light coming from the moon. You know, so that's pretty remote. Um, So pretty dark. So yeah, this, this angel of the Lord comes around them and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And uh, then, you know, after he makes the announcement, then the whole host, the multitude of the heavenly hosts. So that's where I'm getting at, like with this whole talk of meteor showers and shooting stars. You see the one, I mean, and you're like amazed. All right, now how do you? How does that get like? That just blows me away. Like what that must have looked like, and what constitutes a multitude? Like a multitude. Well, or, well, you think about like in Revelation. Revelation 7, where um, John is up there and it says, a multitude from every tribe and nation. Like, a multitude is like, to me, in that regard, uncountable. Right. You know? So, a multitude of heavenly hosts. Yeah, the angel army, you know? That must, what a sight, like. Yeah. And then to hear them saying, which I always picture as almost like a singing. Yeah, I do too. Like. Because it had to been heavenly hearing them sing, mm-hmm. because they're heavenly hosts. You imagine the sheer volume of what you know this glory to God in the and highest. And then you think, like, if it was the multitude, 
seeing this, saying this, didn't others hear it besides the right, shepherds? Right. Like, you know, or was it just this like small, like, oh, we'll just put a, the cone of silence around the shepherds yeah. and only they can hear this. Yeah. Can't see this in the town of Bethlehem because, you know, there's a lot of lights. And oh. So like, you know, if you look up in the sky, it just looks like the oh. town lights. Oh, there's another, some more lights on. Yeah. Kind of like Chicago. Right. Like you look. We were driving home from church after the concert uh, Sunday night and uh, going down Lake Cook Road West over this uh, forest preserve area where I usually take my dogs. And there's like this, um, oh, it's like a little lake that uh, starts out as a stream. But as I looked, I guess it would have been south, uh, the sky was all lit up and there were a lot of clouds. And I thought, man. I didn't realize it was so light over there. You know, that's like Carpentersville or Dundee, you right. know, and I'm like, but maybe because the, the clouds are so low. But but in thinking too about this, like the singing or the sound, you know, I bet people near that place at 1060 West Addison would love that during concerts mm. that they didn't have to hear the whatever yeah. band is playing right. until late in the evening. Until late in the evening. Because you would think here they would have had to have heard something, but yeah, I mean, like I never thought about that till <clears throat> just now. Yeah, why didn't why didn't anybody say like, you know, when the shepherds came to see Jesus, you know, there was mm-hmm. no recording of like when they they told everybody what they had seen and heard concerning the child that that Luke doesn't write in and people saying, yeah, we heard the angel. You know. Uh, it's- not like, you know, Gloria. I get it. They don't have ring where, you know, you get those notifications on your ring. Like, <laughs> I heard fireworks going off in this area. Did oh. anyone else hear this? Oh, man. Don't get me going about ring stuff. I just, oh, yeah, I know. Like, I saw a coyote. <laughs> Did anybody- well, okay. Now you, 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 you hooked me. <laughs> I hooked you on the coyote so, one. No, the, no, the coyote one. Yeah, there's always that. And, uh, um, but just the other day, I saw a notification came up on Ring, and it says, does anybody else smell gas outside? You know, what do, what do you think it is? And I'm thinking, hello? You know, if it's gas, call NICOR. Maybe you have a gas leak, a natural gas leak. This is an important thing. Well, the Ring community needed to know. They needed to know because everywhere it must smell like gas outside. I don't know about you, but I've never reported anything I've seen on my Ring. I've never been like, Oops, saw a coyote on my ring overnight. No, no. The funniest one I saw in response to the coyote thing was like, yeah, and I saw one that was (laughs) smashed by this uh, huge (laughs) triangular uh, metal weight that said 1,000 pounds on its head, and and on the other side it said Acme. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I wonder, you know, maybe, you know, following up for our gathering place, friends, Maybe I need to post one if I see a trash can panda. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I don't see anybody ever posting about them on there. No, nobody cares about those little varmints. I mean, or skunks, so that way people know not to let their dogs out to get skunks. You know, I would get in on that conversation. Oh, I know you would. <laughs> I think your dogs would appreciate you oh, getting yeah. in on that conversation. If I could find the location of all the skunks in the neighborhood, I would be a happy guy. <laughs> you know, that they're not in my backyard. But uh, I think we've kind of steered off course here a little Sorry, bit. But no, no, off. I've I've done it myself as well. But you know, we're just trying to give the people what they want—a little humor here and mm-hmm. lightheartedness. Because you know, we got to live up to those expectations after our guests we've had recently. I know we've had wonderful guests. I almost wanted to quit the podcast after that comment, been like, we can't go anywhere but down after uh, this. I know. Yeah, but you know, as much as um, you know, they were afraid. And that they had seen the multitude of the heavenly host and hearing them, you know, with the Gloria and Excelsis Deo. Oh, beautiful. Gloria. So then, and then Luke in the King James, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. So now we know where the angels went to. And even seeing that, them going up into heaven right. would have been cool. Well, even I was just thinking, like, how the first thing the angel of the Lord says to them when it's just the angel of the Lord, do not be afraid. Yes. You wonder if he just, the angel of the Lord just came by themselves, himself, I don't know, like, if they're, because they're kind of genderless. Mm-hmm. If it was, that was the purpose of just the one coming, 
Because then seeing the multitude, if you would have saw the multitude right first, away, you'd have been running or yeah, hiding. But and seeing the one, you're like, uh, maybe this, you're curious. You're drawn right. in, and you know they're they're sore afraid. And isn't that the way it is? Um, you know, with with Jesus too. You know, he comes. You know, um, when the disciples were out on uh, the Sea of Galilee and the waves were big, he passes by them. And, you know, they thought he was a ghost, you right. know, and he says, fear not. So always God addresses the human fear in the unknown, mm-hmm. you know, uh, w- in the encounter of the divine. Like you say, fear not. And then for behold, here's, you know, take notice of this. I bring you good tidings of great joy. What a, what a fantastic phrase there. Good right. tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. So there's the proclamation from, you know, the God who is greater than Caesar Augustus. Right. And then the fact that it's for all people, that's always one of the things that stands out. It doesn't say for a set group, but it's for all people. Yeah. Past, present, current people. Mm-hmm. And and that's how Luke began the, the gospel in chapter 2. Uh, Caesar, uh, there was a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, even to his own town. So now God the Father, through his messengers, the angels, has um, has good news for all people. I mean, the taxation wasn't good news. Right. So Wait, people don't get people didn't get excited for taxation back then like I they do now. I can't imagine that they would, especially being subjugated under the Roman Empire. You know. Um so yes, this is for all people. And then the beautiful words of verse 11, for unto you is born this day. For unto you. This is for you. Right, going, that all, now it's, that all is like big picture. Now it's getting specific. You. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. narrowing it down. And I think of, you know, when we give communion, um, take and eat, this the is. body of Christ given to you. Or for you. Yeah, given for you. Right, that um, individual, that Christ comes to us just as he came to us there in Bethlehem and he'll come back to us at whatever date he decides to return mm-hmm. or when God sends him back. Yeah, so like you say, this is now getting personal um, and that he is the Christ. He is the Messiah and he is the Lord that we've been waiting for. Um, and then they tell them how they can find him and where. And then, you know, the multitude comes. And uh, and so then in verse 16, uh, okay. no, before that, back up. When they're saying, let us go to yeah, Bethlehem. Yeah, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. It's interesting. It says thing, this thing. yeah. He's not a thing. He's a person. Yeah, this this event, I guess. Right, you know, and like it's not like they birth. knew that there was really... Well, I guess the angel did say, up front to you as a child is born. Right. But yeah, I guess it is more this event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that they didn't like sit there... Dilly-dally. Dilly-dally or run away or like, what in the world was that? I mean, I mean they, they were... Question, yeah, they didn't even question, like, did you guys see... like? Are we? What are we seeing? Like, should we go? Yeah. They went with haste. Yeah. Yeah, went with haste, and then they found Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And then, you know, then they begin telling their story when they saw him, all that right. they had seen, which is great. That's that witness. Right. You know, Kind of like our Christmas concert, come and see, go and tell. Mm-hmm. They went and saw, they came and saw, mm-hmm. and they went and told. Yeah, when they returned. And they were, when they returned, they were doing what the the heavenly host was doing. They started glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. I always think of there in verse 19, Mary treasured up all mm. these things, pondering them in her heart. Yeah. Like what that had have been like. I mean, you can speak to that, like treasuring up those moments when your kids were born, mm-hmm. but... No offense, your kids aren't the savior of the world. No, no. But and she knew this was her son was going to do this to just treasure up and having like the shepherds come, 
and just pondering them in her heart. Mm-hmm. Keeping and pondering, yeah. How, how she just must have just been sitting there watching all these events transpire yeah. and being utterly amazed. Like, wow, all this, yeah. how did I get so lucky to be a part of this? Right. Yeah, you think of like what she must have been thinking during that long um, trek, uh, right. you know, from Nazareth to Bethlehem, uh -huh. and now you know she has the child, and uh, she's just taking in, taking it all in. You mm -hmm. know that, like you said, what a special thing, um, and and it makes you wonder. Like this, to me, probably carries takes us back to the Magnificat when she was told. Right. And then she sings, you know, like, how blessed am I that, you know, I would be the That's mother right. of the child, the savior of the world. And um, and now she's, she's taking it all in there, you know, right. in that song. That's her response to the angel right. Gabriel. And now she's continuing to just hold this right. into her heart. Treasure this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I got, got much else on this. No, it's just always a beautiful story, and, you know, it's so familiar, but it's good to kind of just step through. Right, because sometimes you almost forget some of this until you kind of take a deeper dive. Yeah. And uh, so, friends, just remember that uh, while, you know, heaven opened up, brought forth the whole multitude of the heavenly host in proclamation of, of the Messiah, Jesus, coming as a little lowly child for you. Right. You know, and uh, look what all he accomplished. Right. And it's no wonder we, like the shepherds, praise God and glorify him. Right, and we give thanks and we come together and celebrate that birth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for tuning in today and... We'll see you guys next time. God's blessing.